The role of paramedics who respond to emergencies and rush patients to the nearest ER is expanding. More community paramedicine programs have trained paramedics to make home health visits and perform many roles that used to fall to primary care doctors and nurses. Here with the story is WSJ's informed patient columnist, Laura Landro. Laura, thanks so much for being with us. So is part of this a response to the lack of primary care doctors we're seeing? Well, that's obviously a big problem in this country. Um, primary care doctors, nurses, there's a shortage. So the idea is to use some of these other types of medical professionals who have been trained and can go into patients' homes more easily and keep them out of the hospital. So give us an idea of where this is happening and what sorts of tasks paramedics are performing. Well, it's all over the country, really. I talk to people in Minnesota. There are people on the West Coast, people in Pennsylvania, people in New Jersey. And it's health systems who either own, have their own paramedic employees or they work with ambulance services. And they basically are, are trying to do as much as they can to give services in the home that people would get in the hospital, but you'd be spending all this money you didn't need to spend, whether it's IV services, um, wound care, medication reconciliation, and getting patients to understand their hospital discharge instructions. And you spoke to a lot of the patients who are receiving this extra yes. care. What do they say about it? Well, they're very happy with it. Obviously, a lot of them are, at first, they're like, do I want someone in my home? Mm -hmm. But then they realize that people are coming in, and they don't have to go to the hospital. They can do everything in the comfort of their own armchair. So much better. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what do paramedics say about this expanded role for them? Well, the ones I talked to were very engaged by, you know, they're so used to just rushing to the emergency, dropping somebody off at the ER, and never seeing them again or finding out what happens to them. And this way, they get to know people. And some of them are still rotating between the 911 days and the days when they're kind of in the slow lane. Yeah, it's a different, sort of a different role for them, for sure. Now, who is paying for this extra training? training and for the extra role that the paramedics are playing. You know, that's an evolving payment model. Mm -hmm. Some of it's being done in Minnesota. Medicaid is covering some of this. There are some grants. These, some of these are pilot programs. And then some under the new health law, you know, they have these accountable care organizations which allow hospitals to share in savings from overall caring for a patient in a way that's cost effective but also prevents things like readmissions. Right, and is it too early to gauge how these programs are doing, or are there some numbers out? Well, there are some really interesting numbers on the reduction in ER visits, mm -hmm. inpatient hospital stays, and most importantly, readmissions, because you now get penalized as a hospital if a patient's discharge with certain condition is readmitted within 30 days. So it sounds like it's going well. Do you think this model will be replicated? It is. You know, we're all, th there's a big move in, in health care to find ways to deliver care more efficiently, more effectively, and interestingly enough, more in the home and out of the hospital. I mean, sometimes, you know, patients have to be in the hospital, but if you don't have to be, you don't want to be, and they don't want you to be there either, so. I certainly think that's something everyone would welcome, right? Staying yes. at home, getting more done there. Thank you so much, Laura Landro, for that. Thank you.